welcome to Balkan Moto. Uh, today we're going to continue with the design of the balance bike. Um, this is kind of where we left off last time and since then I've done a little bit more design work on figuring out uh, some of the other components. Um, so to begin, uh, we're going to address something very small, which is the handlebars. Um, so the design has this 7 8 uh, wooden dowel kind of going through both fork sides. Uh, and we're, the reason it's 7 8 is so that it can fit standard uh, grips. So we're going to get some motorcycle grips, put those on there, make it look real cool. <laughs> then the other thing that you'll notice is there's two holes here and here on the forks. Uh, and these holes were added in order to mount the headlight. Um, the headlight, uh, the design there, I will show you the two brackets that are first going to be added. So the brackets look like this. Uh, they're just a piece of 2x4 that's, or actually these are uh, pieces of uh, plywood maybe, that are cut down uh, to size and shape and drilled to match that hole here and the one at the top. Uh, so that's the left and here's the right. The, to attach them to the forks, we're going to use more of the uh, M8 uh, washers, uh, bolts, and uh, nuts. So that's kind of what it, how it would attach. Uh, and the other one will look like this. We're essentially giving that front end even more beefier look with that bolt. <coughs> Um, and then the headlight itself uh, is going to be essentially made up of a number of um, circular cut um, half inch plywood pieces. So the first of which would be essentially the front of it, uh, which has a hole in the middle. Uh, and then we have another one with the same size behind it. And that one, the inner circle or the inner part will be painted white or some other light distinguishing color. Um, the outside's black, and then we have two smaller ones behind that, uh, and one really small one at the back. So that's kind of like what the headlight ends up looking like. Now to hold all this together, uh, we're going to use some construction screws, um, and from the back we're going to add eight of them. Uh, they are gold, uh, and these are I believe two inch, so they'll hold everything up to uh, the second piece here together. And then to make sure that the front piece is attached properly, we'll add eight in the front, and eight in the front are uh, one inch screws. So they'll go in through the first and most of the second part. So the headlight itself ends up looking like this, a little more stylish. Now to attach to the bracket, uh, the bracket is pre-drilled, um, but uh, we will be using screws to attach it, and they are looking like so. so these are, again, fairly large screws. Maybe these are two and a half inch. Um, and since there is a gap here between the um, bracket and the uh, light, we're going to add some M3 washers on there just to kind of make sure that, that doesn't go anywhere. Uh, and then same on the other side. And that's kind of how the headlight would look. So our bike now looks more like a motorcycle. Important uh, CX500 motor. Uh, so last time we sh I showed you how I have the brackets for the uh, engine mounts. Um, the motor itself will resemble the one from um, the uh, CX500 um, in shape, but obviously not in functionality. So the motor itself will be attached with uh, two brackets at the back and one at the top. And these brackets, just to show you, uh, look like so. So they are uh, pieces of um, uh, half inch plywood that has been cut to fit this shape and uh, go into the um, uh, bolts on the frame. And then 
the two brackets are essentially like so, and then there would be a uh, piece of 2x4, cut the shape and size in between, that would essentially mount them together. Um, these are more than likely to be attached, but more construction screws. Um, and for the top mount, a similar type uh, design, uh, where we have a middle piece that uh, would be a 2x4 that's cut down to shape. Uh, that's essentially the piece that fits there, uh, as well as two additional pieces that would screw it together uh, and allow for mounting to the engine block itself. Now, as far as the engine block goes, it's built up of a number of uh, pieces of, I believe these were two by sixes. Uh, so if we reveal that, starting from the bottom, we have one piece, oh, actually these are two by fours. So we have the bottom piece, then we have two on the left and two on the right, kind of going up to that bracket piece. So all of this would be screwed together. So it's one solid block. Uh, and then for the cylinders themselves, uh, we'll have uh, pieces of four by four uh, that are cut and board to shape. So these pieces essentially will have that cut across and down like this, allowing them to be mounted on an angle as well as the cut in the center so they can be mounted up against the bracket. And this hole in the middle uh, is gonna function as the hole where we're gonna mount the intake and exhaust pieces. Uh, this uh, hole fits a two inch ABC pipe or ABS pipe. Um, into it uh, with some union fittings on each, in each end. So that's kind of how the motor looks and you know already it's starting to look like a CX500. Um, and then uh, what we're going to do next is uh, set up the ports. So like I said the ports are made up of um, ABS pipe. So the first piece here is that pipe. So you can see here, there's just a piece of ABS pipe with the exact same length uh, or width as the block, as the cylinder head itself. And then on either end, we're going to put uh, union fitting, male union fittings. So these are going to be hard glued to it so that you can't take it out either way. These then provide a, a thread for us to attach the rest of the components. Well, same thing on the other side and that's kind of how the motor is starting to look like we have these ports that we can attach things to um, for the carburetors I, I was initially going to use a um, uh, some ABS T fittings uh, Saturday T's uh, for these but they were too big and they would have interfered with the uh, foot peg uh, spacing so you wouldn't actually be able to sit on this bike properly so instead, what we're going to do is um, uh, we will add the female fitting, which attaches like so, uh, then a small piece of pipe at the end of it, and cap it off. And that cap at the end, I might just paint to look like a, uh, uh, a pod filter uh, so that it actually looks more complete. And essentially, the left and right carburetor end up looking like so. Now for the exhaust on the other side um, we have a similar type approach uh, where we have we begin with the female fitting um, and a small piece of pipe and then to that we attach a small 90 um, another piece of pipe a long 90 and then the final piece of pipe uh, and our exhaust ends up looking like so. Uh, the exhausts are not vertical they are uh, tucked in on an angle as you can see under the bike um, and kind of end up looking like so. Now I know what you're thinking uh, this looks like it will not clear the front tire as it steers but it actually does so uh, if we were to take the front wheel and let's say the forks 
uh, and the center bolt since that is the pivot uh, point and rotate this around the normal and the active element you will notice that going this way let's say 40 45 degrees the tire clears the um, the pipe as well as the um, fork ends up going all the way to touch the tank which is kind of like the max steer angle and it does clear the um, uh, exhaust same on this side as you can see the tire does clear things and the uh, for clear thing so this should be good I mean once I start building the actual thing I will have to fiddle with it a bit uh, to um, get things to be just right I may need to uh, fiddle with uh, the length of these pipes inside the motor or even how this is mounted so that I might need to move it back a tiny bit just to get that clearance uh, but that's why the exhaust gets mounted kind of last. Uh, we first need to get the frame in order and everything else. Um, but either way, uh, that's how the motor ends up looking. Um, there will be a radiator piece that would also kind of fit under there. Uh, I haven't figured out how that's going to be mounted, but essentially it's a rectangular piece of um, uh, wood. Uh, it might be just two pieces of, or a single piece of, um, half inch plywood um, that's mounted under there with some sort of bracket to the frame as well as the motor uh, just to keep it at that sloped angle so it actually looks like a radiator and I might, do, might paint it with some grid lines to make it look like an actual uh, radiator so that's that's it for the motor um, there will be more details uh, on it and how it's actually held together and maybe some cooling fins and so on and so forth but i think those i'll deal with in reality not so much in the 3d world um, the other thing that i did was i added uh, some more details to the seat so the seat will be a black leather seat with cross stitching uh, in this sort of pattern uh, for creating for a design it looks like so so this is what the bike is looking like right now uh, it's not too big not too small um, it does have that chunky look um, I don't think it will weigh too much uh, given that these pieces are quite small um, but we'll see once we start building it next uh, episode we're gonna uh, focus on actually uh, building this out uh, or starting to build it and uh, getting some um, two by fours to start building the frame uh, some uh, plywood to uh, get the brackets and some bolts so we can start shaping up some of the swing arm and things like that either way uh, thanks for watching uh, make sure to subscribe hit the little bell for notifications when new videos become available check me out on instagram at bakumoto 2018 and uh, check out bakumoto.com Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.